The Wooden 2 h is my new main and I do not see any other keyboard changing that other than the upcoming Wooden 60 h This is the best gaming keyboard you can get at the moment and that is mainly because of the Lecker switch. They are Hall effect just like the Omnipoints in the Apex Pro but there are a few key things that make these superior. And the first one is the configuration. There is a bunch of stuff you can do with the Wootility software to get every last bit of performance out of your board. The second one is the feel of the switch and these are very smooth just like the Omnipoints on the Apex Pro. But for me the key thing here is that the actuation force is a little bit higher which works very well with the rapid trigger and we're gonna talk about that very soon. But before let's quickly talk about some features and the quality. The keyboard costs about 185 euros or dollars and it feels somewhat plasticky to me and definitely not as high quality as the Ducky X Bar Mila Maya Pro that I have here. The stabilizers are very good but sadly my spacebar has developed some rattle in the two months that I have used it. This is only on the right side of the spacebar so it's not not a massive deal breaker, but it's not nice to see. Other than that, I do not have any complaints whatsoever. The left side of the spacebar feels very good, and so does all the other keys. Basically, for typing, this keyboard feels much better than any other gaming keyboard I've had before. The 2HE has a detachable USB-C cable, but it's stuck sort of underneath the board. I have two cables on my desk, one plugged into my gaming slash content creation system and one to my work PC. So I basically plug and unplug a cable twice a day to this keyboard and it's pretty irritating that I have to reach on the bottom part of the board. For me and anyone else who switches the cable at least sometimes, it would be much more convenient to have the plug somewhere here. For the price of this keyboard, I would say that the quality is kind of okay, but for example, the Razer Huntsman TKL that I have here feels of higher quality in terms of everything else but typing itself. Let's get into the gaming performance and how you can actually optimize your Wooding 2HC or your future Wooding 60HC to the max. To start with, their keyboard should have very low latency. If you are to believe their marketing, a standard kind of gaming keyboard has quite a bit of latency and a Wooding keyboard with default setting has about 16 milliseconds less latency. Latency. Then again, when we use tachyon mode in the Bootility software, we have 20 milliseconds less than a standard keyboard. Basically, what the tachyon mode does is that it disables RGB effects and it improves the latency by 2 milliseconds. To be honest, it's pretty hard to tell if I can feel the difference in this or not, but my guess is that I can't. We have to remember the fact that end to end latency on a good system is something like 20 milliseconds, so 2 milliseconds, especially on a keyboard, is something you really should not notice. But let's get to the two things that can actually improve your keyboard's performance. And those are the adjustable actuation point and rapid trigger. Configuring an optimal setup will ascend this keyboard to a whole nother new level. And the most optimal settings that I have found are these. The actuation point that I use is 0.1 millimeters, which is very, very fast. And to fight some accidental actuation, I've also set per key actuation for some keys. So from here, you can see that one to four number keys are set to 1.1 millimeters, tab is set to 1.5, and Q is set for one millimeter. Basically, all the keys that have some kind of action bound to them are set to a higher actuation point, so I don't accidentally actuate those so much. For example, from the numbers, I switch weapons, Q is the standard kind of ability in Apex, and Tab is usually inventory or scoreboard. I've found that 1 to 2 millimeters is the best actuation point for these keys, as that is something that still feels somewhat responsive. Now, having the actuation overall at 0.1 millimeters makes a massive difference on how responsive your keyboard will feel. But there is also a major downside to this. For example, with the Wooding 2HE, total travel is about 4 mm. So there is a massive 3.9 mm dead zone where nothing happens with this setting. Meaning that the switch will actuate pretty much instantly, and with this actuation force, you most likely bottom it out, and then it resets or deactuates at 0.1 mm again. But actually, this is where Rapid Trigger comes in. Rapid Trigger is basically an option where you can configure when the switch resets, and this is a game changer for most people who play FPS games. The value that we set for Rapid Trigger is the amount that you need to release a switch for it reset. And it also controls on how much you need to press the button down again 
for the switch to re-trigger. If you have watched me stream or tweet or talk in Discord, you most likely have seen me complain about large dead zones in gaming keyboards. And rapid trigger completely changes the game. Setting up your keyboard like this is especially effective for any FPS games where you need to counter strafe or strafe left to right really fast. Or just a game that has movement keys that are in conflict with each other. What I mean by this is that if I press A to strafe left, and while I hold the A key down, I press D to strafe right, you are going to stop instead of strafing right. So basically with rapid trigger you can instantly strafe right once you release the left key. With a standard keyboard you would have to wait for that switch to get to the reset position. So strafing or dodging bullets in CSGO and Valorant can feel extremely responsive like this. Of course another thing is when you need to spam one button so you do not need to reset the key fully. So of course you can get more actuations per minute or you can just re-trigger the switch faster. The thing about this keyboard is that if you get it you better use a high actuation point like the 0.1 or 0.4 millimeters. The incredibly fast actuation point and the rapid trigger are what makes this keyboard so good for gaming. Buying this keyboard and using a 2 millimeter actuation point is pretty much useless and also rapid trigger is not as effective at that level as well. Of course typing with rapid trigger enabled and a low actuation point is not going to be fun, but you can set a new profile on Vutility for work for example. Now I myself have set a different RGB effect for this mode, so I do know which profile I'm in. There are also a bunch of analog features that I myself think are quite useless for the games that I play, but there is double movement for Fortnite and there is also this dynamic keystroke which could be interesting. So I think the Booting 2HE beats the Logitech G915 TKL, the Fnatic Strix 65 and the Apex Pro with ease. Configurable reset points for switches is an absolute game changer, so we will have to wait for some other manufacturers to come up with their own as well. The only gripe that I actually have with this keyboard is that it's full-sized. It's not very ergonomic to play with a full-sized keyboard in my opinion, and it might be especially hard for you guys who use low sensitivity, I mean your mouse might hit your keyboard quite a lot. I'm also personally disappointed that they did not make a TKL, a 75 or a 65% but instead went for the 60% layout for the next keyboard. That being said, I of course had to pre-order the Woody 60 he But hey, that's pretty much it. If you don't want a full-sized keyboard, I recommend you consider pre-ordering the Woody 60 he or you can check out my Fnatic Streak 65 review right here. And if you used all your money to pre-order the Woody 60 he Check this video right here for a really good budget mousepad. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and see you in the next one.